Okay, mid-season interview with Bucknell head coach Joe Susan. Coach, how are you doing today? Matt, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you. So first, start off with your quarterback, Brandon Wesley's won four straight or four Patriot League Rookie of the Week awards in his five games this year. Talk about his development through the first five weeks of the season. Brandon uh, really showed that he had the potential in preseason to be a very good quarterback, and uh, we played him some in the first week, and then uh, really gave him the start from the second week on. And he's gotten better and better as a quarterback. One of the things that uh, he's begun to understand is that he, he is by nature a movement oriented kid and uh, sometimes he'll move out of the pocket when the pocket is still there. Uh, he's got to learn to be better at looking down the field while he's moving and uh, continuing in the passing game before uh, pulling the ball down and running it. The other thing that uh, as a 170 pounder, 173 pounds to be exact, uh, he doesn't know when to go down, which in some ways is a good thing because he's a tough kid, but uh, you want to get up and uh, take the next snap. But I, I really feel he has the uh, composure to be a very good quarterback in this league, and uh, he's really retained his humility, which in, in some ways for a young kid being put into a situation and then getting the league notoriety really could change a kid. But, uh, he has really responded well to that, and I think a lot of that has to do with who he's just surrounded by as teammates and this coaching staff. Another player on uh, on offense, uh, Tyler Smith, uh, top 20 in the nation in all-purpose yardage. Um, what makes him so versatile in being able to run, receive, and, and return kicks? He, uh, he is a very good athlete, number one. Uh, he has a knack for returning kicks, which unfortunately we've returned a lot of kickoffs, but uh, also a very good receiver and there have been times in my career where the first and second down back is not the third down back but uh, he's in being the third down back he's also a very good pass protector and understands our protection schemes and there are some things where he as a receiver is our fast pattern and uh, we, we try to vary that obviously so people can't catch on to our protection but very versatile and uh confident in being able to field punts. I think that's one of the uh, harder things to do and kickoffs. Kickoffs are a little bit easier, but uh, the world's closing in on you. But uh, as a sophomore, he's done a very good job for us. Now moving to the other side of the ball, Josh Eden was a top Patriot League player in his first two seasons. Stepped away from the field for two years and has come back uh, just as strong this year. Does that surprise you that he's able to come back so strong after not playing competitive football and, and kind of what's made him have such a strong start to the year? I think part of the reason he's been able to recover so quickly is his maturity. A uh, very mature kid to begin with, and then going through the life experience that he did, being in, on a mission for two years, really brings a kid back with a, a perspective on life that many of the young men that are on our team or he's playing against don't have. He's also 23 years old as a junior, which that's an advantage as well. But he plays with a chip on his shoulder, and I think he'll continue to do that. And I think that's a big reason why he's been successful. He's also blocked three kicks for us, which uh, if it's not in the kicker's mind, it'll get into the kicker's minds. And uh, you've had a number of games, um, most specifically the Dartmouth game, where you, you played a really strong first half but didn't do as well in the second. What do you have to do to kind of carry over that, that performance into the later stages of the game? I think it's more related to our developing some consistency offensively, uh, being able to score touchdowns when you're in the red zone, whether it's in the first half or the second half, it changes the math of the game, obviously. And then uh, I've always talked to the kids, and as a coach, the second half winds up being a separate game almost, and that the momentum from the first half is usually about to change with the first possession of the third quarter, whether you're on offense or defense. And it usually the, the, that first possession sets the tempo for the way the second half will play out. And if a team drives the ball and scores, you have to answer that. So uh, those are the things we've got to get better with. We uh, have to be more consistent in being able to run the ball. And with that, we have to be imaginative as a coaching staff in terms of our uh, 
openers in the second half. You know, everybody scripts openers for the first half, and we've done it in the second half, but uh, usually not as good as the first half. Now you've dropped you know your first five games, but you still have the entire Patriot League schedule remaining. Do you look at this these last six games as kind of a new season, a new opportunity for this team? That's what I've told the team. Yes, uh, the fortunate thing is that our league schedule is entirely in front of us, and the way the league is structured, if you win the league, you keep playing. And uh, I, I want the kids, and they've they've been very good with it. I want them to approach it one week at a time. Uh, the Georgetown game is going to be a unique challenge for us uh, going on the road again playing against a very good football team that uh, it's an opportunity in the league you know, obviously we're looking for our first win and when when you get behind 0-5 oh, oh it's it's something that the kids have really handled pretty well and I think a lot of it's their approach in terms of their resilience and you know, obviously we work as a coaching staff to approach it positively. We're, we're playing a lot of young kids, and as young kids go through the season, as long as you stay healthy, they continue to improve. Mid-season interview with Georgetown head coach Kevin Kelly. Coach Kelly, how are you doing today? I'm doing terrific, thank you. All right. Uh, now, obviously coming off you know, a tough year last year, um, in the off season, what kind of gave the team the belief and the confidence that they can make this significant improvement in 2010? Well, the first thing was change. You know, we had a team meeting uh, in December, and uh, the seniors initiated that meeting. They had one with the team, and they had one with me, and they asked me that same question: "What do we got to do to restore confidence?" And I said, "That's change." So we made a lot of change, and we changed a lot of our most of our offensive staff. And uh, we changed schemes uh, on defense, and I think, uh, well, I know the players uh, bought into that, did a great job in the offseason program, great job in the spring, and then that's built, uh, obviously, in the preseason, and I think it's made a dramatic effect uh, for us this fall. Now, most of your games this year have been decided in the last quarter, if not the final minute or play. Um, some wins, some losses, obviously, but have those type of situations helped your team gain confidence um, playing games at the end of the, at the end that are very close? Yeah, with, without a doubt. And, you know, the thing we talked about, the buzzword, I guess you could say, all uh, preseason was trust. You know, trust in the coaches, trust in each other, uh, et cetera. And I think that's uh, what they believe in. And, you know, like you say, when you have some success, uh, you know, that uh, restores your confidence. And I think the kids uh, feel that they can win games in the last minute. And, uh, you know, they understand that there's a lot of attention to detail because uh, also – on the flip side, if uh, you're not detailed and you're not, uh, you know, having attention to detail, you can uh, you can also lose football games. Now, Scott Darby's had uh, some very good games at quarterback after uh, winning the battle in very close competition at camp. What tools have made him um, a strong quarterback this year, and, and have kind of developed into a good leader for your team? Well, uh, Scott's always done a great job uh, with the run aspect of things, and the thing he worked uh, hard on. You know, since the last off season with throwing the football and his decision making uh, process, so he's he's done a great job in both those areas, and that's what's made him more of a complete quarterback. And uh, your team's among the leaders nationally in interceptions. Uh, what has kind of allowed that to happen, um, and made you so good at, at taking the ball away? Well, we worked a lot of our you know we're playing more zone coverage than we did last year. We played a little bit more man and. You know, I think our kids are playing uh, their techniques much better, and then we're also, you know, getting some pressure up front just with our front four, and I think that's uh, helped uh, dramatically. Okay, and you obviously have a big game with uh, Bucknell coming up this weekend. Um, talk a little bit about your position now in terms of, you know, obviously it's different than past years where you've played the early schedule and you're still very much in the Patriot League race. Uh, what's it like heading into this game, and then kind of throughout the year? with most of the Patriot League games still to be played, although you don't play them that many weekends. Just a different feel now that you're in the in the thick of the race heading towards the end of the year. Well, what I told the kids this week is that uh, Bucknell is actually undefeated in the Patriot League. You know, they're, they have the same goals that our, our players have. And, you know, right now we do have one loss, so, uh, you know, Colgate has none. You know, what we can control is, is the rest of our Patriot League games, and uh, hopefully uh, we get some help uh, from some of our colleagues in the league, and we'll see what happens. But we only can control what we can control at this point.
midseason interview with Holy Cross head coach Tom Gilmore. Coach, your offense struggled for a three-game stretch start, but you've really played well in the last couple of weeks. What's been the difference in these past two games on that side of the ball? So, um, we have uh, seven guys that are uh, starting for the first time this year uh, playing, um, and uh, obviously they didn't have a lot of experience uh, coming into the season, and we're still uh, inexperienced those those games. So I think the game experience has helped a lot. And then secondly, you know, we have, I think, done a better job as coaches adjusting to these players, figuring out better what they can do. And, uh, you know, they've been able to go out and execute those things uh, a lot better. And uh, defensively, you certainly played well last week in the win over Brown um, against a very good team. Um, do you feel like this is coming together to be one of your better groups on that side of the ball? I do think we have a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I think we were um, – um, making over-aggressive mistakes for a few weeks there. Sometimes when things aren't going well, you, you don't play within yourself. And, uh, you know, we certainly had some guys making mistakes that um, they normally would not. So, you know, um, really have come together as a unit. I think we're gelling both on offense and defense. Um, guys are starting to get more comfortable with each, tr- each other and trust each other to get their jobs accomplished. Um, Ryan Tagger and Kevin Watson have both been um, seeing some time at quarterback. Uh, what does each player bring to the table that you that you want to get both players on the field? Well, you know, this has been a very close competition between those two for two years, and uh, it went right down to the wire um, all preseason. Uh, it was very close, so we we think that um, they both bring a lot to the table. Um, they're they're um, they're similar um, as far as performance level, um, but they are a little bit different. Um, and uh, you know, but we've been able to go out and execute uh, a very similar offensive scheme with both players. And uh, since it's so close, we've been rotating them pretty much by series. Um, and uh, I think the competition uh, between the two um, has really pushed uh, pushed pushed each, each of them. Um, to get better in, in recent weeks, and that's been showing up on the field. Uh, a couple weeks ago, you had a tough loss against Georgetown, um, the end of the three-game uh, losing streak. Um, do you feel like your confidence in your team has kind of come back a little after winning these past two games? Absolutely. Um, we're a completely different team um, than we were three or four weeks ago. Um, the change had started right before Georgetown, in my opinion, but we weren't quite there yet. Um, you know, we we're still maturing. We were still um, iron, ironing some things out. Um, the other thing that I, ha- I think happened right about that time is we got a couple of players back from the injury list, most notably on the offensive side of the ball, Billy Edger, who's our top receiver. And that was a, an, an added spark to the whole equation as well. The week before that, we got our uh, Ricky Otis back on the defensive side of the ball. So having those guys back um, was was an extra spark. But uh, we, we definitely have been gaining some steam um, since that week of practice. We, we wound up falling short in that game. But, uh, but ever since then, we've been uh, getting better and improving in every way. All right. After your game at uh, at Dartmouth this week, go to Colgate on October 23rd. Um, obviously, it's been a very uh, good matchup in the past couple of years, and it's come down for the Patriot League title. Talk about um, that matchup, and then the rest of your Patriot League schedule. Um, you know, obviously, uh, it's hard to look ahead of games, but uh, um, you know, when we have one this weekend against Dartmouth, um, we're certainly focused on that right now. But uh, you know, we expect, uh, you know, going to be a, a very difficult task to go up to Hamilton, New York, to uh, to play Colgate. They're always tough, and they're especially tough at home. We haven't had a lot of success in, in Hamilton in recent years, so we're hoping to uh, to turn that trend around this year. Um, we'll just need to have a, a complete game against them. We're going to have to move the ball very well, and obviously shutting down the offensive attack they have with Sullivan and Nietzsche is always a challenge, and uh, we're certainly going to have to do a great job uh, you know, getting them, minimizing their gains. You're not going to stop them. You just have to minimize them.